Hello and welcome back to Swift Goose. Today we're going to look at optionals in Swift, including what they are and how to unwrap them and use them in your code. Optionals are useful when working with variables that may or may not have been initialized to what you or the compiler thought they would be. If we have a variable that depends on other code running, but that code never runs or may fail to run, then we need a way to tell the rest of our program that this variable is empty or nil, has no value, so that it doesn't crash the whole app. Let's declare a regular integer variable, var num is int, and now let's declare an optional number, var num opt int with a question mark. Now we have two different variables. We know that num is of type integer and it can hold any integer value. So three, 6,000, zero or negative 400. Our optional integer is essentially saying it can be three or 4,500 or negative 15 or zero but it could also hold nothing or be nil. You can essentially think of an optional like a package. The package can contain an integer or it can be empty. Initializing optionals is the same as regular variables. num equals five and num opt equals six. Let's print them out. num num opt. As expected, we printed out five, but for our optional value, we printed out optional six. Our six is basically still inside of a box. You'll notice Xcode has also given us this warning saying that the expression was implicitly coerced from integer question mark to any. Essentially what's going on here is we need to unwrap our box or our optional in order to actually use the value six that's inside. We can do this using nil coalescing, force unwrapping, and a few other methods, which we'll get into shortly. Now, if we set our optional number to nil, and print it out, we get nil. As it stands now, we can't actually use our value six, if we put it back in here as an optional, because we need to unwrap it. If we try to multiply, our num times num opt and run this, we will get an error. Value of optional type must be unwrapped to value type integer. Keeping with our box analogy, this is like saying we can't work with what's in the box until we first take it out. There are a couple of ways of unwrapping and dealing with optionals. And the first one we'll look at is nil coalescing, which is basically providing a default value in case our optional is nil. To nil coalesce and provide our default value, we can type print num optional question mark question mark three. What this line is saying is if our optional is nil, then we'll use the value three instead. And here we get six, and that's because we set our num optional to six. But if we change it to nil and run this again, we'll get three. So since num opt was nil, we're going to use the value three instead. Another way to unwrap the optional box that we have is to use force unwrap. Let's set our num opt back to a number equals two, print out num opt, and this time to force unwrap it, we can put an exclamation mark. Now when we run this code, you'll see we get the value two. But if we change our num opt back to nil and force unwrap it, we get a fatal error. Execution was interrupted, unexpectedly found nil while unwrapping an optional value. This is one of the dangers of using force unwrap in your code as it can result in a fatal error and crash your program. This is almost like saying, let's unwrap a box that's not there because num optional is set to nil, meaning there's nothing there. When you unwrap it, there's nothing to unwrap. And that's why we get a fatal error. You really only want to use force unwrap when you're 100% sure that there's not going to be a nil value. Another way to unwrap our optional is to use optional binding. Let's set our num opt back to three. Scroll down a little bit. If let second num equals num opt. And then we'll just print out our second number. Else print something went wrong. 
let's get rid of our exclamation here to avoid this error and run our code. Now we're getting three. The format for our optional binding is essentially setting a new variable, second num, equal to an optional variable. And what's happening here is if our optional number contains a value, we're setting a new value, second number, equal to that value. And if it's nil, then we're going to follow through with our else statement and print something else went wrong. We can confirm this by setting our num opt to be nil. Press play. And we see something went wrong. Since our optional was empty, second num is not bound to anything, and we proceed with the else clause of our optional bind statement. One important thing to note here is the life or scope of our second num variable is only for this block of code. So if we try to print out our second num here, there is no variable named second num. And press play. Error cannot find second num in scope. That's because our second num variable is only available for this top level if statement of our optional bind. Let's delete this code to get rid of the error. And the same is true with our else clause. If we try to print out our second num here, it can't be found in scope. And that's because if our num opt value is nil, then second num will never be set and the else clause will be executed. Another thing to note is that our variable that we're declaring here does not have to be a constant. We can change this to be var. And now we can set our second num equals second num times two and print out our new second num value. Press play. And make sure we change this to be three and then press play. And now we get six. And another way to unwrap optionals is using the guard statement, but we'll look at that in a separate video. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, and remember to hit the dinner bell.